Hi, my name is Greg Norman. I work at Electrical Audio. I'm here to show you how to calibrate a Studer A820 multi-channel tape machine. Just like a 24 track and a 16 track, it's just the same. Anyways, get your fingers ready. You got a lot of buttons to press. First thing you need to do is to clean and dust the machine. Uh, sometimes I like using a Zwiffer duster to clean some of the dust off the planes of it. Uh, keep it away from the moving parts though. Then clean with alcohol that has 90% or better. Soak a Q-tip in it and clean the tape guide path. But I like to start with the heads first. Clean up the center of the head where the gap is don't go to the sides because there's some conductive epoxy you could rub off with alcohol. You need that. Make sure when you're done cleaning, your Q-tip's nice and spotless. It doesn't have any grime on it. If it has grime on it, just get another Q-tip and repeat the process. Ooh. Yeah. The Studer 820 has a feature to clean the capstan motor. When no tape is loaded, you can hit press the button play and the capstan motor starts spinning. Now, for sure, you want to make sure the Q-tip isn't soaking wet because alcohol can drool down into the bearings and ruin them. So just a little bit of dampening is good enough. And you just hold the Q-tip against the capstan motor as you slowly go down. And that'll be clean. Just hit stop when you're done. So the first thing we're going to do is check the azimuth on both the record and repro heads. That can be done by playing back a test tape, like the one I have loaded here, the MRL test tape that we're going to be using. We we're going to record at 15 nips CCIR EQ. That's what we use a lot of times here at Electrical. Uh, but I'm going to play back the 1K tone first, do the rough adjustment of the azimuth for both heads. Then I'm going to play the 10K tone and do the fine adjustment of the azimuth for both heads, or at least check it to see if it's off. You need a... Uh, 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to do this. And there are two access holes in the editing block above the head block. Uh, playing off the repro head first, all repro, hit play, and gently insert the Allen wrench until it finds its seat. And I'm looking over at the oscilloscope and I'm adjusting so that both waveforms line up with each other. Now I'm using the outputs of track 2 and track 23 to do this, going to the oscilloscope. So I'm going to go do the sync head. That's the hole to the left for the record sync head. And I'm going to adjust that very gently. It looks good. Now I'm going to play the 10 kilohertz tone, do the fine adjustment. I'm still on the sync head, so I'll adjust that head first. That looks good. Oh, that's nice. Now I'll go to the repro head and fine adjust that. Again, the repro head access hole is to the right of the record head. Oh, that's, that's nice and good too. So both heads can be done at the same time because you can play back from both heads separately. So now we're going to do the uh, playback electronics for both the repro and sync heads. Uh, a couple of things you need to have set up in advance is you have to have the right calibration tape with the right tones on it. In this case, we're running 15 nips CCIR EQ. So I have those tones ready to go. And you need to change the meter mode from peak, if it is in peak, to VU mode. And there's a soft key in the software to make that change. Uh, the way you can tell if it's in peak mode is by looking at the row of lights on the meter bridge and see where it lines up with the scale. And the yellow scale is the peak scale. The white scale is the VU scale. So the row of lights should line up with the zero of whatever scale you're in. So I'm going to switch it from peak mode to view mode. We have a soft key program just for that. And you can see the meter lights move. So now we're in view. And now you want to do your repro calibration 
from that point. Then I go to the software alignment section up here on the meter bridge and press auto par align, auto parameter align, and go to repro level. And I check on the LCD screen to make sure that it says zero, zero. Now that number means uh, that represents what this row of lights is. So right now this row of lights represents zero VU. Uh, you might have noticed that when I switched to auto power align, you saw the row of lights move again to a new mode. And this mode is a high resolution mode. So now it's zoomed in to show you more specifically what the level is. And I'm at repro level and I'm going to press play and play back the one, kilo one kilohertz tone and hit store start and the machine does all the rest. It aligns all 24 channels in one go. It's like upside down missile command for you old people. So that just finished the repro level alignment of the repro head. So I'm going to go to the sync head and do the same thing so that the sync head is also aligned to the test tape. Press play, one kilohertz tone. It's still repro level. Hit store start and it calibrates itself. This would normally take 15 minutes to do with all the little trimmer screwdriver trim pots on an old machine. But thanks to 20 or 30 year old technology, we can just stand here and watch it. Okay, both the repro level of the sync head and the record head, I'm sorry, the sync head and the repro head have been calibrated. Now we're going to do the repro treble and uh, play the 10 kilohertz tone. And hit store start. This might take a little bit longer than the 1K tone. So sometimes when you're playing back the tones, you run out of tone and you have to re rewind and uh, start over again. And this machine has a feature where you can just locate to the point where you started from, hit play, and it'll continue where it left off. If you just hit stop, everything stops and it resets to zero. Nothing's, nothing was achieved, so I'll show you what that looks like. I have to hit store start again to restart the calibration process. And then let's say we're running out of 10K tone and I need to rewind and play more. I'll hit locate and then play and you can see the it's all frozen and it picks up where it left off. And the repro treble has to be done for the sync head and the repro head. So the sync uh, electronics have been calibrated. You can see all the level on the meter bridge is right up along that row of lights. I'm going to switch from the sync head to the repro head and do the same thing. Playing 10K, calibrating repro treble. Okay, the treble has been adjusted for the repro head. And that's all you need this test tape for. You're done with the repro. All right, you're done with the MRL tape. You can spool that off and load a fresh reel of tape for your session. We're just grabbing a scrapped piece of tape from the studio for demo purposes. So before you start any recording adjustments, you want to make sure that the Dolby HX Pro is switched off. You can find that button here, but in order to make it change state, you have to set enable, press the button, and you can see the light came on. So I'm going to set enable, turn it off. Okay, you've got your tape on the machine that you're going to use for the session. We're going to do the bias first, and I got to arm all the channels and uh, select record bias. Uh, to change the bias setting, the over bias setting, 
you press bias preset and it shows in the upper left hand display what the over bias level is. Right here it says 2.8 over bias. You can use the MREF, which stands for meter reference, to change that. I'm going to change that to 3, negative 3, meaning 3 dB over bias. And I'm going to hit store start to save that setting. When that happens, the bias preset mode disappears and it goes back to regular old record bias adjustment. I'm going to double check that it remembered it just by pressing bias preset again. It's there. Press it again to get out of that mode. And now we're going to record a 10 kilohertz tone and then do the bias. That's recording. Store start. So after the bias is completed, we can move on to the record level and record treble adjustments. I'll go here on the keypad and press record level and it'll go into record level adjustment. And it'll record a one kilohertz tone. Hit store start and watch the show. It's so exciting. I wonder if the drummer's any good. I wonder if it matters if he's any good. I gotta stop paying attention to what I'm doing so I don't get hurt when I don't do it right. That's done. Let's move on to the uh, record treble adjustment. And that pre-selects a frequency that I don't like using. I like to keep it standard with other tape machine adjustments where I do the record treble at 10k, zero view, so I'm going to switch the tone generator to 10 kilohertz and at a level of zero view. Some people might look down upon that, but I like it. Uh, after it's set up that way, I hit store start. And it calibrates itself magically. All right, treble's done. What I'd like to do now is the final stage of the alignment process, and that's the repro base. I'll go here and select repro base, turn the tone generator on, and select 0 dB, and change the frequency to 100 hertz. And you can see what frequency it is on the bottom left of the screen. And then hit record. Looks pretty close, but I'll hit store start and it'll calibrate itself again. And we'll watch the meters move slowly, patiently. So now that's complete, I like to check the bass frequency response by turning the tone generator down to a lower frequency. That's 90 hertz, 80 hertz, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, 40 hertz, 30 hertz, and now it's off the scale. And this is a high resolution meter, so all the way down is 2 dB down, all the way up is 2 dB up, so it's actually pretty good. And that's it. The machine's ready to go. Okay, sometimes you'll need to calibrate your tape machine to a different level than the reference tape level. And I can show you how to do that with the keypad on the meter bridge. So go into auto par line. Again, make sure you're in VU mode first. And go to repro level, because you'll be playing back the one kilohertz tone off the test tape. And let's say you want to be, let's say you want to calibrate the machine to 3 dB higher than the reference tape you'll want to make sure that the tones on the reference tape play back 3 dB low on the meter bridge. So up in the upper left hand corner of the LCD screen here, there's a 0.0, .0 which represents what this row of lights is. So 0.0, .0 VU, dB VU. I'm going to use the MREF buttons to go down 3 dB. And 
now this row of lights means negative 3 dB VU. And when you play the 1 kilohertz tone and hit store start, the machine will calibrate itself to that level. And you repeat the process for the repro treble playing back 10 kilohertz. It'll reset to zero up here, and you just have to change that to negative three. Once it's at negative three, you press play to play the 10 kilohertz tone, hit store start, and it'll calibrate itself for that. And the repro electronics will then be set up for 3 dB lower than whatever the reference tape was set for or recorded at. Thank you.